Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on Crack Concepts and in today's video we will be discussing top 10 must do DBMS questions with answers. If you have a SQL interview nearby, you are on the right video. This video covers top 10 DBMS questions. There is a high possibility you will be asked at least 3 out of these questions. So let's begin with today's video. Our first question is explain normalization and its types. It is one of the most important questions. You can be asked what is normalization. You can also be asked why is it needed? Why is normalization needed in DBMS? Normalization is the process of organizing data to minimize redundancy, which is repetition of data and it, it improves data integrity. The reason why we need normalization is to minimize redundancy. To reduce duplication of data and how do we do this suppose we have a large table with lots of columns lots, lots of data normalization will allow you to break it down into smaller tables and by creating relationships this way you will minimize redundancy and there are four types of normalization first normal form second normal form third normal form in your interviews you you might not be asked to explain each of them in depth but you should know basic what they do one nf first normal form it just eliminates repeating groups two n two nf it eliminates partial functional dependency three nf eliminates transitive dependency bcnf it eliminates functional de dependency i have individual videos on each of them i will make sure to link it in the description box do check it out but if you know basic what these normal forms are doing, that should be enough. You should just know what is normalization and why is it needed. And how do you perform normalization? Question number two. What is the difference between SQL and NoSQL databases? And when to use which one? This is also an important question. SQL is relational database, structured data. It uses tables and schemas. NoSQL is non-relational flexible data it uses documents and key value pair one major difference between the two is sql has tables and schemas sql has rows and columns New, no sql can have documents or it can have key value pairs so data is not structured since it is key value pair or you can use documents in sql it is structured because we are using rows and columns it is asset compliant asset what is asset that is our question number three we will come to it later SQL is asset compliant, no SQL is base compliant. Basically available, soft state, eventually consistent. And what are the examples? SQL is SQL is MySQL, Postgres, and for no SQL it is MongoDB. And which one to use when? It totally depends on your requirement. SQL is best for applications with structured data. Let's say banking or inventory or HR or customer data. All of this is structured data and in such cases you should be using SQL. NoSQL is best for rapidly changing or dynamic data. Some of the use cases could be social media apps, real-time chat box. Let's move on to question number three. What is asset property in DBMS? Asset stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. Atomicity, each transaction is all or nothing. All the steps in a transaction will complete or none will get completed. Consistency, data will be valid throughout according to all defined rules. Consistency means it will basically maintain all the database rules. Isolations, suppose there are multiple transactions, they will not interfere with each other. They will execute on their own. They will execute in isolation, which is why isolation, durability. Once you have committed your data, even if there is some failure or any sort of crash, your data will remain as is. The changes will remain. It is safe. It will remain. That is durability. Committed data will not be lost. That is durability. So that is atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. Question number four. Types of joins in SQL. Another very important question. There are four types. Inner join, left join, right join, full join. This is a simple query. Select whatever columns you want to select from table. Whatever join you want, you want to use. Inner join, left join, right join. The second table name on whatever columns you want to join the two tables on. This is how it will look visually. Inner join is when two tables are being joined, whatever is common between the two, that is inner join. Returns only matching rows in both tables. Left outer join is 
all the rows from the left plus whatever whatever columns are being matched from the right table that is known as left outer join all rows from left plus match rows from right similarly right outer join all the rows from right plus matched rows from left full outer join is all the rows whether or not there is a match in the other table all the rows will come in your output fifth question what is indexing how does it work another very very important question when it comes to tbms indexing is a technique that allows retrieval of data from database quickly it works just like an index in a book let's say you want to read the chapter where they are talking about fitness instead of going through each page one by one you will go on to the index index of the book and there you will find where exactly is that chapter where exactly is the chapter related to fitness and then you will directly go to that chapter instead of going through each and every page that is an analogy similarly we have indexing in dbms it just allows quick retrieval of database just how index in a book allows quick retrieval of pages it allows you to find that particular chapter quickly and there are four types of indexes primary secondary composite and unique index primary is it sorts and stores actual data rows in order of the index one per table secondary it is it creates a separate structure with pointers to the data it multiple allowed composite indexes it is created on multiple columns unique index it ensures all values in the columns are unique question number 6 difference between primary key unique key and foreign key primary key is a key in a table that uniquely uniquely defines each row but no nulls are allowed unique key is the exact same thing but it allows one null foreign key is a primary key in a another table it references primary key in another table this is an example of how do we create a foreign key or primary key create table these are the columns and then this is how you define a foreign key foreign key column name references this is the table so this is this is table orders which has a foreign key customer id which will be primary key in which table customer id uh, in customer table question number 7 what is deadlock in dbms how can it be prevented deadlock occurs when two or more transactions are waiting for a particular resource and they are waiting on each other indefinitely so they keep waiting and none of them get the resource and that is a deadlock nothing is happening neither of them is going ahead they are just waiting waiting nothing is happening that is a deadlock what are the prevention techniques timeouts resource ordering wait die wound wait schemes avoid holding logs too long question number 8 difference between delete truncate and drop drop will delete the entire table including the schema from the database there is no rollback it is a ddl data definition language it is it is one of the ddls it will delete the entire table now what is the difference between delete and truncate both are removing rows from the table the table exists in drop the table is only um, deleted the entire table with data with the schema everything it is it is deleted but in delete and truncate you are just removing the columns now what is the difference between delete and truncate let's see that in delete it it allows you to remove specific rows from a table you can use where clause in truncate all the rows are removed from the table and where clause cannot be used delete is a dml data manipulation language it is one of the dmls truncate is ddl data definition language delete can be rolled back truncate cannot be rolled back this is one major difference whenever someone ask you what is the difference between delete and truncate of course both of them are removing rows from the table Del in delete you can use where clause in truncate you cannot but in delete the data can be rolled back but in truncate you cannot delete is slower and truncate is faster use cases it is for targeted modifications and truncate is bulk emptying you want to empty the whole table truncate is best option question number 9 what is a view in sql what are its advantages view is a temporary table it's a virtual table based on the result of a sql query this is how you create a view create view this is the name of the view as and this is the query this is a simple query over here but you can have a very complex query the results of that query will be used as rows of this particular view which is a temporary table why is view uh, beneficial it simplifies complex queries it provides security it helps with data abstraction now what this means let's say you have couple of tables which have lot of confidential data 
and you do not want everyone to look into it so you can create a view and you can specifically use only those columns you can add whatever filters you want to do you can use those specific columns and create a view so that the rest of the users can use the view that way they will not be able to see the confidential data in the source tables like let's say over here we this view only has those employees that have salary greater than 1 lakh let's say you do not want your users to see people who are earning less than 1 lakh so in that case creating a view is beneficial it provides security it helps data abstraction question number 10 what are triggers in dbms how do they work a trigger is a set of instructions that fires automatically on insert update delete and this is how a trigger is created create trigger this is the name of the trigger when it has to be triggered like uh, when this trigger has to be executed after there is an update operation on this table employees for each row and what will happen what will the trigger do it will insert into log audit log whatever values and this is the end it is used for log logging changes enforcing business rules you can enforce some business rules let's say someone is inserting or someone is deleting data in a very important table so and you want to create a trigger on that so whenever someone is deleting data from a particular table you want a notification so trigger is beneficial in such cases third is auto updating data you can update the data whenever there is a trigger let's say there is some you created let's say you created a trigger on a particular column on a table whenever uh, there is uh, there is an insert you want automatically couple of other inserts or couple of other uh, update statements to happen you can do that as well auto it allows auto updating data as well so these are the top 10 important dbms questions i hope this video was helpful do check out our dbms playlist our sql playlist check out our sql ebook and with that i will end this video thank you so much for watching